Makeup done, face tan, heels on. We stand there watching as these girls, even younger than us, are yearning for their name to be called. And the winner of today's pageant is. But before we get into the discussion who the winner is, let's talk about the reality behind child and teen beauty pageants. Child and teen beauty pageants are detrimental to the development of young girls and therefore to the evolution of society today. Each year, pageantry becomes more and more prevalent as do the negative effects that follow. As a current young adult in the world today, it is our job to help protect the next and upcoming generation. As most of us in this room are probably over 18 and therefore should be able to decide for ourselves whether or not we want to participate in pageants, the same cannot be said for a two year old beauty queen. As someone who's watched her lifelong best friend be forced to a pageantry by her mom and older sister, I've been able to see firsthand the negative effects the pageantry can have. I've watched as she was told that she could and could not eat since she was seven years old because she had to look right in her pageant dress. And I've watched as she was crying because she didn't want to go on stage and then she got in trouble because her tears didn't affect her makeup. Today, I will be discussing the dangers that revolve around the childhood pageant industry and how I'm succeeding a minimum age of 18 to help participate in these issues. Now that we have a brief overview of what we will be discussing today, first let's talk about why this is an issue to begin with. Pageants, while claiming to focus on scholastic and talent, in reality, more focus on outward appearance. And this can be detrimental to mental health and it can cause safety concerns in participants. While doing a research study on body image issues and pageant participants in 2003, research professor at Sage Thompson found that over one fourth, or about 26% of the women, had been told or perceived that they had a eating disorder, and about half, or 48.5%, reported one to lose weight while 57 percent said that they were actively trying. This varied greatly from data found by the Clara Teen Center in 2019 that looked at all girls rather than just girls who were in the pageant industry that stated only 5.2 percent girls have been diagnosed with TV. This is a problem that continues to increase as time moves forward. In the 1920s, the average BMI for a pageant participant was between 20 and 25, which is considered a medically healthy dose. However, by 1990, the average BMI was 18.5, which is considered medically underweight. In 2007, University of Minnesota professor Amy Wunderlich stated that since this study, the average BMI has continued to decrease. In 2018, Lauren Bellaro with the American Psychological Association said, Girls get this message repeatedly. What matters is how hot they look. It plays on the TV and across the internet. You hear it in song lyrics and music videos. It's a powerful message. This is also something that continues to increase because now we have access to social media such as Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, where as soon as you open it, you see this image of what beauty standards should look at, and that can skew with what young girls perceive of themselves. Additionally, many young girls who are participating in pageants are doing so before they're young enough to be able to make decisions for themselves, which often translates into their mothers trying to live vicariously through them. Starting to compete at such a young age can it cause unhealthy pressure on young girls and make them feel like they're trying to live up to this role or idea of who they should or who they should be, rather than giving them the opportunity to discover for themselves who they are and who they want to be? In regards to a mother's influence, in 2018, Laura Bellaro from LA Times said, after having a conversation with a mother of a child beauty queen, she claimed that nothing is wrong with sexualizing children because sexuality lacks beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Ironically, this highlights the problem. There are many people, many of them or not, who do consider a five-year-old sexual prey. And when she is on display or taking it away, she has it. The unfortunate reality is beauty pageants do sexualize girls at way too young age. Now, a murder case that many of you may be familiar with is the case of John Bonnet Wearing in 1996. She was a five-year-old beauty queen who was murdered in her home. And while the case still remains unsolved, something that circulated while they were investigating was there were some who came up to her as a pageant she wanted to meet before and made comments to make her feel more uncomfortable. So many people asked the question, if she wasn't doing pageants at this woman's age, would she still be alive today? In 1997, Lauren McConnell with LA Times said, child beauty pageants appear to be another example of America wanting to have it both ways. A pain into the beautiful innocence that childhood should be, dolled up with the aura of adulthood. Pageants blur the lines between what is simple and what is true. Instituting a minimum age of 18 can help uh, to participate in pageants can help with this issue because 18 year olds are considered legal, legal adults in the United States. According to Clara Teen Center, 89% of females who develop an eating disorder will have the diagnosis symptoms by the time they're 17. The 
does not mean that 89% of girls will be diagnosed before they're 18, or that 89% of, of people who have eating disorders are under this age. What it does mean is that before you turn 18, it's the most crucial time in the development of body image and self-esteem. And by keeping children and young teens away from this type of environment that has been seen to be so prone to development of eating disorders, can significantly decrease the amount of body issues that are seen. Hazards are not all bad though. As they do have features that help develop confidence and leadership skills, exposure to hazards can allow young girls to work on self-expression and their communication. And it's significant because this can help with job interviews and their communication in everyday life, as well as how they interact in the workforce. Hazards can also be a resume booster as it allows for um, dedication and preparation, as well as most hazards have a talent portion. While hazards should not be banned altogether, Due to the unprovoked sexualization of young girls, as well as the negative emotional effects that it has, they should be limited to those who are 18 years and older. Working towards the abolishment of child beauty patterns is something we should all take an active role in. This is a prevalent issue in society today, but it's one that's not very commonly talked about. It is our job to keep our children away from the dangers of pageantry, as well as inform others of the negative effects that can happen. Now, back to the winner of today's pageant. The answer is no one. While someone may be getting a title in this town, the negative effects that start when someone is just a girl and remain with her for the rest of her life far away any benefit that may be temporarily 